Let's turn over to 531 in your hymnal. 531. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Let's all stand together as we sing. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, he ransomed from the war. Hail him who saved you. Charmaine, is that you? You got home? Good. They were uh, North Carolina, wasn't it? I saw a post there when that snowstorm came, and uh, they were waiting. Did you Did you come up 77? Or did you go up 95? Or you have no idea. That's what I thought you looked like. <laughs> Along for the ride, huh? Amen. Well, I'm glad you're back safe, and uh, it's good to see you. That's great. All right. Good to see everybody here tonight, and uh, looking forward to a good service together. Thanks for being back in church on Sunday evening. Let's pray together, shall we? Father in heaven, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for another opportunity to gather together here. Thank you for this morning and for meeting with us and speaking to our hearts and uh, for the decisions that were made for you today. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory. And we're back this evening and ask you once again to meet with us. Uh, may you use this service, the, the singing, the fellowship together, uh, the preaching of the word of God. Use it for our good, and for your glory. And Father, may you be pleased with our service tonight. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Let's turn to 443 in your hymnal. 443, there is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright. On that verse, let's sing it together. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright. There is sunshine in the 
singing. Now a few announcements for us. Listen carefully if you would. Regular schedule this week. Uh, Wednesday night for our midweek service. Of course, Tuesday night, your Grove City School of the Bible will still meet as usual. And uh, got started off with a good start last Tuesday night. And uh, I think you're looking forward to that again on Tuesday evening, those of you involved with that. And uh, Wednesday night for the midweek service right here in the auditorium, continuing in Second Peter chapter 1 on Wednesday night. Uh, Thursday night for our you down at the Central Reception Center. Um, and to think, I think it were, there were three men saved. I know that, and I think we were we were down again in number. I think there were what 19 maybe uh, on Thursday night, something like that. And uh, we we discovered a little bit why that was so. Uh, Chaplain Nelson, who's been kind of our main guy and who invited us to come down there, he's been gone for the last two months. Um, where's he from? Nigeria. Nigeria, and uh, he goes back home every year, and uh, he spent two months back home. And, uh, and uh, he does the orientation for the new guys coming in, and he always promotes RU and tells them about it and tries to get them to, to pass to come and things like that. And he's not been there, so uh, that's, that's hurt us a little bit uh, with the attendance. But uh, still, God's, God's working. Good things are happening there. They had a good day at London on Saturday morning. A um, good number of men there. I think nearly 20 out there on Saturday morning. And uh, now... Another, uh, right across the street from London out there is Madison Correctional Facility, and uh, some of the guys, particularly one fellow who left London and graduated the course already, uh, went over to Madison, and uh, he got with the chaplain, and uh, they called the church, called Brother Reed, and said uh, they want us to come to Madison, uh, so, and take the program there. We, we probably have at least 20 guys in there that have gone through the RU program already, and so I think we got a real good core of uh, guys to start with, and so uh, we just have to meet with them and figure out how we can uh, make that happen. It's just awful difficult to say no. Uh, we're not going to come help you, and uh, kind of like that Macedonian call when they're saying come help us, and uh, we'll just, uh, they'll be away, and uh, we'll make that happen, amen. So pray for that, and uh, it'll be a great, uh, looking forward to a great week this week. It's going to be a beautiful week weather-wise, and uh, going to stay kind of warm for us for January anyway, and uh, we'll take it, amen, and uh, look forward to what the Lord has for us this week. If you, um, if you need more coin folders, or if you did not get a coin folder, the usher will get you one right now if you'd like. These are uh, quarter quarter folders to put quarters in for Bibles. Uh, the first Sunday of February will be I Love My Bible Sunday, and uh, we'll be turning these in and then sending them the Bearing Precious Seed for them to print Bibles for missionaries. Okay, one, <coughs> one uh, full pack of quarters, uh, one of these with quarters will do two complete Bibles or five New Testaments for missionaries, some missionary they can use to give to folks whom they're ministering to. So uh, you can get extras from the ushers uh, after the service, or if you need one right now, just put your hand up and they'll give it to you if you'd like one. If everybody, I think most everybody's probably been here and had it, but uh, if not, make sure you see them afterwards, or they're laying on the table right there uh, in the auditorium, and you can pick those up, okay? And then we'll bring them in two weeks from today on February 7th, and then we'll collect those and send that off to Bearing Precious Seed, Okay. Well, let's take a minute now and welcome our guests we have with us in the service. And uh, who's going to introduce our guest tonight? You're going to do that, Marsha? Okay. Christy. All right. Great. Good to have you tonight. All right. The usher is going to hand you a card there to fill out, Christy, if you would. And uh, if you'll take just a moment and fill that out, we'll have a record of your visit with us this evening. And a little bit when we have the offering, just put that card in the plate and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming, okay? We're glad you're here this evening. All right, let's give this young lady a warm welcome, shall we?
Number 11 in your hymnal. Number 11, long before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. He is mine. Number 11. We're going to sing both verses of this song. On that first, let's sing it all together. Long before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. He exchanged the sinner. one more time but let's stand you guys sing really well standing up let's sing that chorus one more time all right ready he is mine he is mine i am blessed beyond all measure he is mine i have heart and full and free through the blood he shed for me Great. Turn over just one page there, number 13. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Let's sing that first all together. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls. one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. On that last, let's sing that together. Every need he is supplying, plenteous grace he bestows. On that last, together. Every need is supplying plenteous grace he bestows. Every day my way gets brighter the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, said amen you can be seated that's great singing tonight ushers will come we'll get our offering now appreciate your faithfulness in giving and giving us a god's blessed and prospered you and let's pray and we'll ask god's blessing on our giving tonight brother wallace leads in our prayer please let's pray Father, we do thank you that those words are so true. The longer we serve you, the sweeter you grow. Lord, you're such a great God. Help us to comprehend just how great you are tonight when our pastor opens up your precious word. Father, I would ask that you would just peel back a little bit of that glory that God, the pastor was talking about this morning. Let us see through your word some of the glory that Moses saw that you had to cover your face because the people could not stand it Father we came to hear from you would you go down every row touch every heart bless the offering in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, please. Psalm 139, if you would, please. Psalm 139. The 139th Psalm for our scripture reading. We're going to read the first 17 verses of this psalm. And read it responsibly as we normally do. Begin together on verse 1, then I'll read 2, alternating until we end together on verse 17 of Psalm 139. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. 
And let's begin together on verse number one. Ready? O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassed my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of this scripture here this evening. And Lord, we thank you already for the wonderful music tonight, ministered to our souls, and I trust, Lord, we've sung with grace in our hearts unto you. Lord, it's sure been a blessing to be in church tonight. And Father, we ask that you would make our hearts ready now to receive your word. Bless Brother Bob as he sings. May we listen carefully. And Lord, may you minister to our hearts and make our hearts good ground for the word of God to fall into tonight. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way and was wretched and vile as could be. But my Savior in love gave me peace from above when he reads down his hand for me. When my Savior reached down for me, when he reached way down for me, I was lost and undone without God or his Son when he reached down his hand for me. I was near to despair when he came to me there and he showed me that I could be free then he lifted my feet gave me gladness complete when he reached down his hand for me when my Savior reached down for me, when he reached way down for me, I was lost and undone without God or his Son when he reached down his hand for me. 
How my heart does rejoice when I hear his sweet voice. In the tempest to him I then flee, there to lean on his arm, safe, secure from all harm, since he reached down his hand for me. When my Savior reached down for me, when he reached way down for me, I was lost and undone without God or his Son when he reached down his hand for me. I was lost and undone without God or his Son when he reached down his hand for me. Amen. Thank you, Bob. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer. And Father, we do thank you for reaching down to each of us. Thank you, Lord, that you left the splendors of heaven. And you didn't lay aside your glory there. Come down and take upon the likeness of sinful flesh. And Lord, thank you for living a perfect life here on this earth. And Willingly going to the cross and becoming our sin bearer. Lord, not just dying for us, but dying in our place and then conquering death. Rising from the dead three days later. Ascending back to heaven where you ever live to make intercession for us. And Lord, you're able to save all those that come unto God by you. Thank you that you're a living Savior. Thank you that you're still in the saving business. Lord, I pray tonight if any are in, is in the room and they've never experienced the saving touch of Jesus Christ, that they'd experience that this evening. That Lord, they would realize that you would reach down for them tonight and you would cleanse their soul from sin and you would give them the gift of eternal life. Now, Lord, I pray for your help as we come to the preaching of your word. Uh, help us and open our understanding as we look into your word tonight. We love you. And Lord, I pray you'll speak to our hearts now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can keep your Bible open at Psalm 139. We're going to go there in just a minute. I want to just read one verse of Scripture to you from James chapter 1, where the Bible says in verse number 17 that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God has given us every good and every perfect gift. And I'm not talking now tonight about spiritual gifts that we dealt with a few weeks ago that God gives to everybody when you receive Christ as your Savior. He'll give you a spiritual gift to exercise in the body of Christ. But I'm just talking about gifts that He gives us. For instance, let's start with, I'll just jump right into number one, and that is the gift of life. The gift of our physical bodies, if you will. That's what David is talking about in Psalm 139, in the, in the psalm we read here just a few moments ago. Um, Bob Hope was, of course, one of the great comedians. And um, when he was getting up in years, he once commented that he was reading and he was astonished to discover. He said, today my heart beat over 103,000 times. My blood traveled 168 million miles. I breathed 23,400 times. I inhaled 438 cubic feet of air. I ate 3 pounds of food. I drank 2.9 pounds of liquid. I perspired 1.43 pints and gave off 85.3 degrees of heat, which generated 450 tons of energy. I spoke 4,800 words, I moved 750 major muscles, and I exercised 7 million brain cells. And he concluded by saying, no wonder I'm so tired. <laughs> and 
And, you know, it's amazing. Someone else said, People travel to wonder at the height of mountains, at the huge waves of the sea, at the long courses of the rivers, at the vast compass of the ocean, at the circular motion of the stars, and they pass by themselves without ever wondering that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, as David said. Let me give you some other examples. David said in Psalm 139, there when he penned the words of, uh, in verse number 14, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. I want you to consider that statement when you listen to this. In a square inch of skin, you'd find 20 blood vessels, 65 muscles, 78 nerves, 78 sensors for heat, 13 for cold, 160 for pressure, 650 sweat glands, 1,300 nerve endings, and 19,500,000 cells. The skin serves several purposes, including building a, providing a protective shield against bacteria and viruses, the absorbing of bumps and bruises that might otherwise damage your bones and internal organs, and in that inch of skin, your sweat glands in your body do double duty, helping to eliminate waste and to cool your body. Then there's your brain. Don't say anything. Your brain weighs about three pounds, but stores a hundred trillion bits of information over the course of 70 years. That storage capacity is, would be equal roughly to and some of you won't understand this, but older people will, uh, roughly 500,000 sets of Encyclopedia Britannica, which, by the way, if stacked, would stretch out 442 miles. That's the best computer you've ever seen, right up there. And your brain does all this and uses less power than a 100-watt light bulb. Your brain is serviced by 45 miles of nerves that send impulses to your body at 325 miles an hour. Your nervous system is so sensitive, you're able to feel on your fingertips or your face a pressure that depresses your skin a bare 400 thousandths of an inch. That's .00004. It's equal to the weight of the wing of a bumblebee falling on your face. Then there's your ears. The piano has 88 keys, but each of your ears has a keyboard with 1,500 keys. And they are so finely tuned, they say you can literally hear your blood running through your vessels. Your eyes are capable of seeing a small candle flame from 30 miles away on a clear dark night and your eyes can distinguish among more than 300,000 different color variations. David said, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And you think about those, just some of those statistics and then you get frustrated when the doctor can't figure out what's wrong with you. You understand why they say we practice medicine. Because they're not about to figure out the human body yet. It is amazing they do what they can do. I'm sure David didn't realize all those facts when he wrote and penned that Holy Spirit had him pen these words. Maybe David was just looking at his hands or looking at himself one day and trying to figure out how intriguing he was and how his body operated. But he tells the Lord that I know that you made me. He said, you, you wove me together. You put my parts together. In other words, hey, David was saying I didn't just happen. I wasn't just an accident. Uh, I have value and I'm worth something because you gave me life. You gave me this body. And God has given that as a gift to each of us. What are you doing with that gift? How are you using that gift? You know, James said that our life is but a vapor. 
that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You only have a short time. I was talking to Charlie just for the service, and he was saying that his legs give him trouble. He can't get around like he used to. <laughs> yeah, we understand that. You get older, the wheels get tired. And uh, you don't, you know, I was talking to my uh, wife last night, and, um, you know, you just were approaching soon. She's 50, well, I'm not allowed to say that, am I? And uh, <laughs> I wouldn't tell you her age, but I'm, a, I'm about to be 58, and then we'll be the same age. <laughs> and uh, And... Saying, man, I can't believe that you're 58. You know, I, you, don't, you don't think that way. I said, the, the mind, in your mind, you think I can still do stuff. You know what I mean? And then your body says, what are you trying to do? Huh? You've been there? But what, do you, what do you think you're doing? And you find out you're, the, the mind is willing, but the body's weak. But God has given us physical life. Hey, what are you doing with that life? What are you doing with this, this body that's fearfully and wonderfully made? The Bible says we're to be presenting that body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Have you ever, have you ever given your body to God? I think we sang this morning, uh, take my life and let it be, consecrated Lord to thee. And it talks about, you know, take my lips and take my hands and take my feet. It's consecrating every part of your body that God's given you to the Lord. Not for me. I didn't give me this body just for me to enjoy. He gave it to use for His glory and to use for His honor. Are you using the gift God's given you of your body, physical life, for His honor and glory? But that's not the only gift He's given us. Look at John chapter 10, would you please? John chapter 10, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 10, and notice with me, if you will, verse number 28. John 10 and verse number 28, the Lord Jesus says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I give unto them eternal life. Hey, I got good news for you. The Lord didn't just give us physical life and a physical body. God says, I want to give to you eternal life. Not just physical life, not just life now, but life forever. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The, God, the eternal life that God gives us is a gift from Him. Gifts cannot be earned. Gifts, sometimes when you, and I, and I use this at the prison quite often, you know, when Somebody says, uh, I have a gift to give you. You don't get your wallet out and say, okay, how much do I owe you? No, when someone has a gift, what do you do? You reach out and accept it. You realize that by them giving you a gift, you understand it's already been paid for. You understand the person giving you the gift has already purchased it. They, 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 they did whatever they had to do, whether it was to you know, get in the car and go through the traffic and find a place to park and go into the store and purchase that gift for you and then get in the car and go back through the traffic and come home and wrap it up and make it look nice and then bring it to you. They did all the work so you could just have a gift. Well, God says His gift to us is eternal life. But when you ask most people, how can I have eternal life? You know what they start telling you? What they have to do. Well, I got to go to church. Well, I got to keep the Ten Commandments. Well, I got to be a better person. Well, I have to clean this up. I got to stop doing this. I have to start doing this. They start telling you all the stuff they got to do. And, and uh, my question to you is if you have to do all that, why did God say it was a gift? If it's a gift, then I realize that someone else has paid for it. So if God says eternal life is His gift to me, then someone else had to have paid for this. Who paid for our eternal life? Jesus did when He died on the cross. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I go to heaven not, not on what I do, but on what Jesus has done. And I get that gift of eternal life from Him. And my friend, God's given you physical life, but if that's the only gift you ever received from Him, the fact that He gave you physical life, you will die and be separated from God in a place called hell. But you don't have to. 
You don't have to. The only way you do that is you refuse his gift of eternal life. You refuse his gift of everlasting life. And all you have to do to receive a gift is receive it. Just reach out and accept it. He's already done it. The Bible says, To as many as received him, that's Jesus, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so you just have to receive it. I like the story of the fellow who carried around a book and they asked what that was. He said, it's my biography. They picked it up and looked at it. He said, how can this be your biography? There's only three pages in it. And he said, yes, the first page is black to remind me I'm a sinner. The second page is red to remind me of the blood of Christ that cleanses me from sin. And that's what the third page is for. It's white because his blood has washed me white as snow. That's my biography. And he's just given me a new heart. Ezekiel prophesied to the people of Israel that one day God would give them a new heart. And that's what happens when you receive Christ as your Savior. He gives you a new heart. He gives you a heart after God. He gives you a heart that has different desires than what the old heart had. And you desire the things that God wants you to have. You know, Jeremiah had said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. In other words, there's no... There's no knowing the, 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 the wickedness and the sinfulness of that old heart. And the only thing that can help is a heart transplant. Now, they didn't know of such a thing back in that day. And, of course, we have known something like that in our day. But it's a heart transplant. But, you know, God was in the heart transplanting business back then, and He's still in the heart transplanting business now. He still can put a new heart inside of you and me. It's really interesting. Look at Psalm 51. This is David's psalm after he was confessing his sin and repenting of his sin of Bathsheba and Uriah. Psalm 51. This is a great, this is a great psalm of confession and repentance that David gave. And this will be something that, that, that you, ought to bless your heart. Psalm 51. David prays in verse number 10, Create in me a clean heart. O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. The word for create there is a word called bara, B-A-R-A. And, and what's amazing is it's the same word that's used in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And literally, it means to take nothing and make something. Take nothing and make something. So God, God, just as God took the blackness and the chaos and turned it into the world and the, the heaven and the earth as we know it, He takes the blackness and the chaos of a sin-stained heart and He turns it into a new creature in Christ Jesus. He gives me a new heart. When I received Christ as my Savior and I received His gift of eternal life, He gave me a new heart. You know what came along with that? new desires and now there's things I want to do hey there was a day when you didn't care about being in church on Sunday night you, you, you wouldn't be, you thought, man that's the last thing on my list in fact it isn't even on the list that's where you'd have been but now it is what's happened you got a new heart that's what happened your desires have changed you're not the same person you used to be and and listen of all the times that that word is used in the Bible that word bara for creation, it's, it's only used in connection with God. Because only God can take nothing and make something out of it. And that's what God does with you and me. Only God can create something that is totally new and give you a brand new start in life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away. And all things are become new. Behold, all things are become new. So it's great. What are you doing with that new, new start? What are you doing with that eternal life that God's given you in Jesus Christ? What a gift. And it's, and it's listen, don't take it for granted. Remember, few there be that find it. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many are going in that way. 
Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 21 and 22, that they're going to be, <clears throat> did he say there'll be some that come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in thy name and in thy name do many wonderful works? No. He said, many are coming to me in that day. That's interesting, isn't it? Many, and the Broadway is filled with many. That tells me that many believe they're on their way to heaven who are not on their way to heaven. Boy, if your faith is in Jesus Christ as your Savior. You see, when you get before Christ, it's not going to be what we did for Him that gets you in. It's what He did for us that gets you in. That's what gets you in. That gift of eternal life. Thank God for His gift of eternal life. Then there's another gift that the, the Lord gives us. Look at Luke 11. Let's go to Luke 11 and verse number 13. Luke 11 and verse number 13. Wonderful gift that we receive again when we receive Christ as our Savior. Verse number 13, Jesus says, If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Once you receive Christ as your Savior, the, the person of the Godhead, there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit takes up residence inside of you. Your body becomes the temple, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit of God. The word for Holy Spirit is a word that means somebody who's called alongside to help. So you receive Christ your Savior and you begin to set out to live for God. And you, you discover that there's an enemy fighting you. There's, there, the, by the way, not just the enemy of Satan, but you have the world system that pressures, right, pressures you and gives you outside pressure to conform to them. And then you have your own flesh, the old nature, that still wants to be in control. And it doesn't, it doesn't like giving up its control of you, that you've lived under, hey, you've, done, you've been under the soul control and before you got saved. Your soul control, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, what you think, what, what you feel, what you want. And that's how an unsaved person lives. How do you live? Doing what I feel, doing what I want, doing, doing whatever I think. That's how, that's how you live. Now, you want to live under the Spirit's control, and that flesh doesn't want to give up control. It doesn't want to give up that easily. So you find out you have enemy. And listen, you find out that I can't do it in my power. I can't do it on willpower. I can't do it on just, just my gritting my teeth. No, I've got to have help. And God says, I know you've got to have help. And I've given you the Holy Spirit of God. And He's called alongside to help you. He'll empower you. He'll enable you to live as I desire you live. Boy, how often we neglect the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's there to help us, to enable us, to empower us, to help us to pray, to serve God effectively. You know, it's kind of like the Old Testament illustration there when the, uh, Elisha had them building a, a school of the prophets and they needed to enlarge it. And so they were cutting down some trees to get the lumber to build a bigger building for their school of the prophets, the preacher's college, if you will. And one of the fellows came running to Elisha saying, hey, I lost the... Uh, I, I lost the head of the axe. The axe head, it, it, it fell into the river. He's just holding, I can just picture the guy holding the handle. Nothing on top. And Elijah says, okay, come back, tell me where it fell in. And he pointed to the spot and Elisha reached down there and guess what? The axe head began to float. And he reached down and picked it up out of the water. And here's the thing. When you're pounding away with an axe, What's the, what's the most important part of that axe? It's got to be that head. Now think about what that fellow would have done if Elisha would have come by and that fellow's banging on the tree with that piece of wood in his hand. He said, what are you doing that for? You're never going to cut the tree down with that. You've got to have the axe head on there. That's the sharpness. That's where it's going to strike the blow and make a difference. But listen to me. I wonder how many Christians, if we could see today, that tried to serve God in their Sunday school class, in a junior church, on a bus route, in a choir. And they did it with a piece of wood with no axe head on. No acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit. No asking for the Spirit's help. And they wonder why they have no impact. Wonder why we're not making an impact in somebody's life or we're not impacting our community. Because we're trying to do it in our power and not do it in the Holy Spirit's power. Why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to help you? 
Why don't you become conscious that He lives in you? Well, He's there to help. Why don't you ask Him to help you? Help you to serve and help you to live for Him and help you to be the wife you should be and help you to be the husband you ought to be and help you to be the mother and father you ought to be and help you to be the worker you should be and help you to pray like you should pray. Help you to understand the Bible. Hey, holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit is the one. Hey, the author of this book lives inside of you. So why don't you ask Him to help you? Help you understand. And, and make sure that you, you get His help. What have you done with the gift of the Holy Spirit? We have the gift of life, our physical bodies and life, eternal life, the Holy Spirit. But God's given us something else. Look at John 17, would you please? John 17 and verse number 8. John 17 and verse number 8. This is the, the true Lord's Prayer. I believe Jesus prayed this in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is a great statement the Lord Jesus gives us here. Look at verse number 8. Jesus says, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. Jesus said, Hey, I've given them something, and I've given them the words. By the way, not word. Words, plural. The words that thou gave me, and they have received them. You know what you're holding in your hand tonight? You're holding in your hand the words of God. Not just the word of God, the words of God. There's a difference. See, there, we're not of the philosophy that, well, it's just the word and the words themselves aren't very important. You can just so you get the truth, just so you get the meaning. No, Jesus said it, that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words, singular, will not pass away. Every word of God is pure, the Bible says. And so every word matters. In fact, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. How can Jesus say that if he never gives us every word? We have to have every word somewhere. Or Jesus couldn't say we could live by every word. And so God preserved his word and allowed us to have the Bible. But let me ask you a question. What are you doing with his gift? What are you doing with his gift? Oh, I'm, I'm putting quarters in folders so I can send Bibles to people who need a Bible. And that's good, and that's wonderful, and I'm glad you're doing that. But what are you doing with the Bible you own? What are you doing with the Bible you have? Are you reading it? Are you studying it? Are you memorizing it? Are you meditating in it? Are you taking advantage of the Word of God? Holy Bible, book divine, precious treasure, thou art mine. Mine to tell me whence I came, mine to teach me whence I am. Mine to tell of joys to come and the rebel sinner's doom. Holy book divine, precious treasure, thou art mine. Why would we neglect the book that could change our life? Why would I neglect the book that God says, if I take the time to meditate therein day and night, if I will let myself be consumed with that book, that whatsoever I do will prosper. It's an amazing statement, an amazing promise. The Word of God is quick. It means it's alive. It's powerful. That book you have in your lap tonight, listen to me, folks, there is nothing like that book at all that you have anywhere else on your bookshelf. Amen. That book will do something to you that nothing else can do. That book's alive. It's powerful. It, it wasn't written to just inform us. It was written to transform us. And it will transform you. It'll change you from the inside out. We were talking the other night to one of the new people at Reformers Unanimous, and they said, How, how's this work? I said, you know, my, my addiction is not, and they pointed another person, their addiction, but we all do, we're all doing the same thing. I mean, shouldn't I have to do something different than what they're doing because they have a different addiction than I do? And I said, no, the reason that you don't do something different is because though your addictions are different, the answer, the solution is the same. 
And what you need is it's Jesus Christ and getting to know him through his word. And that book right there is what changes you. It transforms you. I've never, uh, I think there is in some of the judicial things that we give to judges, uh, how many verses total that you end up memorizing in reformers. It's, it's well over a thousand. In fact, I think it's over 1,500. I hate to say that to some of these people in the program because they'll think, oh, no. Uh, I think I'll quit now, you know, but no, don't do that. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. He'll enable you. He'll help you to get it done. But why is it the Word of God changes you? It transforms you. Take uh, in the warfare that we have, in the armor that we put on Ephesians chapter 6, what's the only offensive weapon we have? The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God. What a gift. What a precious gift. And again, can I reiterate? What a gift, what a gift that God put you in America. And you can read English. And He gave you a Bible. You have access to that. And we have, you know what? That's a good point. We have freedom to come here together tonight and open it up. And preach it. And, and send it out over the airwaves. Or whatever the waves are on the internet. I don't know what they are. Huh? It's amazing. What an honor. What a privilege. What a gift. Don't neglect it. Don't neglect that gift. Start your day with the Bible. End your day with the Bible. But take it with you all day long. Memorize it. Meditate on it. Write, write verses on cards. Put, it, put them places you can see them. But keep the Word of God before you at all times. You'll never regret that. God will help you. Let me give you a gift number five. Look with me at uh, Luke chapter 17, would you please? Luke chapter 17. <clears throat> Jesus says here, warning the disciples, notice verse 21 with me. He says, Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. He's talking about, be careful about people who say that uh, um, here he is, or there he is, or the kingdom of God is here. He says, verse 22, notice what he told them. Then he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. He's saying, you're going to see things now. This is, in fact, look at another verse. This will go with it. Luke 10. This will go with it. Just go back a few chapters to Luke chapter 10. This goes with that statement, all right? Jesus told him, verse 23, Luke 10, verse 23. Notice what he said. He turned unto him his disciples, or turned him unto his disciples, and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear the things which ye hear and have not heard them. You know what he was saying? You have an amazing opportunity that others have wished they could have had. They didn't get to. But this is your opportunity. Can you imagine what it must have been like to walk and live with the Lord Jesus for those three years, three and a half years? Can you imagine what it had been like to be with Him like that? And to hear and see firsthand all that He did? That would have been, it'd been amazing. What an opportunity. And He's saying, this, is, this was your opportunity. Hey, you know what though? This is our opportunity. Don't miss it. Don't miss the opportunity that God's given us. This is your opportunity to study His Word. Don't miss out on it. This is your opportunity to witness to others and to give others the gospel. Don't miss out on that. This is your opportunity to be faithful to the house of God. Don't miss on that. Don't miss that opportunity to be faithful. Don't miss the opportunity. Hey, this is the opportunity for you to, to, to give the gospel outside the United States. Don't miss that opportunity. If God's touching your heart about being a missionary, don't miss that opportunity. 
don't saying, listen, don't live and die and never know what it's like to lead a soul to Christ. Don't live and die and never know what it's like to get on a church bus on a Sunday and go out and pick up people for church. Don't live and die and never know what it's like to, to hold a child in the nursery and say, I'm taking care of these children so people will hear the Word of God. Don't live and die and miss the opportunity to open the Bible up to a group of children and teach them a Bible lesson. Oh, don't live and die and miss those opportunities to serve Jesus Christ. Acts 13 and verse 36. Would you look there, please? We're almost done. Acts 13, verse 36. Great verse here. Peter preaching a sermon. And actually it's Paul preaching here in Acts 13 on his first missionary journey. Notice what he said about David in verse 36. David, he said, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. David, after he served his generation by the will of God. Hey, guess what? This is our generation. You can talk about D.L. Moody or talk about John Rice or talk about some of those men. You know what? They served in their generation, but this isn't their generation. This is our generation. This is our time to serve God. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss the opportunity to be involved in the work of God and seeing God do some wonderful things. Serve your generation by the will of God. And do something for the Lord in your life. Only one life, so soon it will pass. And only what's done for Christ will last. The Bible's full of people who missed opportunities. You don't have to go very far into the Bible where you find out, uh, by the way, Cain missed a great opportunity, didn't he? Brother uh, Linderman walked us through some of the first chapters in Genesis. I think he was prepared to take us through the whole Bible. But we just didn't, we just ran out of time, Amen. But he took us through the and talk about the choices. But listen, Cain missed a wonderful opportunity to bring a sacrifice acceptable. When, 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 and, and by the way, God, I believe that there was a lamb there. There was a lamb close by that he could have got and brought that, but he refused to do it. Missed in a great opportunity. Hey, the people who mocked Noah made fun of Noah, though he preached righteousness to them. When the rain starts coming down, God has shut the door. Say, Noah, Noah, don't you think anybody pounded on that ark? I guarantee they had to. But Noah couldn't open the door. He didn't close it. God opened, God closed the door. I wonder how many of them realized I've missed my opportunity. I missed my opportunity. The the family of Lot missing their opportunity, though Abraham interceded for them to be able to get delivered out of Sodom and Gomorrah, missed their opportunity. The ten spies at Kadesh Barnea, eight of the, the ten, or ten of the twelve that brought back the bad report and caused thousands of people to die. Forty years to wander in the wilderness. They missed their opportunity. Let's not miss our opportunity. This is our generation. There's a commercial out. Most of you have probably seen it. It's a commercial that touts the fact this, this isn't your father's Oldsmobile. Hmm? You know what? This isn't our father's time either. And this isn't our father's generation. This is our generation. This is our generation to reach for Christ. Sin has always been rampant, but I think the types of things we see today are things that you wouldn't have dreamt of a generation ago. You just think about just in, just in my lifetime, and I'm still such a young man. Don't laugh at that. Thank you. 
And somebody says amen, or that's right. That was, that was worth at least $10, I guess, Don. I'm glad I paid you. <laughs> but you know, my lifetime, we, we started the, in, in fourth grade. I had a teacher that we started the day off where we, she read in the Psalms every morning. Public school all my life. She read the book of Psalms every morning, had prayer, and then we said the Pledge of Allegiance. And now if you do that, you get a lawsuit against you. Just, just amazing. Just, just in one lifetime. People, people suicide missions. Killing themselves and killing as many people as they can in the process. It was unthinkable. This is our world, though. This is our opportunity to win others to Christ. This is our opportunity. Listen, <clears throat> I heard a statement this week, and it really, it really caught my attention, so it's not original with me. I wish it was, but it wasn't. But it's a great thought. Listen carefully. The job of the church is not to reach the world. <gasps> I thought that's what we're supposed to do. No, no, no. Jesus never said we're supposed to reach the world. What did he say? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So our problem is a lot of times we compromise on things. I'm talking about we, talking about the church at large, compromise on things. And why do they compromise? Well, we have to reach people. No, we don't. We have to preach the gospel to people. Hmm? Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. It's not our job. Our job's to preach. Our job's to proclaim the gospel. We get, we get off base when we think we got to do things or change things just to reach people. No, we just have to preach the gospel. That's the job. This is our opportunity to do that. Let's not miss that opportunity. Let's, let's influence our generation for Christ. Whether it's door to door and giving out gospel tracts, whether it's person to person, talking to people about the gospel, whether it's a RU program or are you inside the prison program or whether it's a bus ministry or a radio ministry or an online uh, ministry or whether it's uh, a country fair day or a turkey dinner Sunday or a parade at Grove City. doesn't matter what the opportunity is. Let's seize our opportunities to give the gospel. It could be something as simple as a sign out front of the church. People stopped in before and visited the service and been in church because of a sign that gets put out there. Had a lady at RU Friday night who's brought her son and she said he, it was a month or so ago that we found out he called us and said he's a heroin addict and uh, we brought him to our house and she said for a day and a half we made calls to every place we could find and she said there is nowhere to help him. Nowhere in Columbus. She said the, the, it's, just, it's just awful. And she said finally we found a place over at OSU, I can't remember what the name of the hospital was there, Harding House or something, and she said they put him in there and put some kind of a patch on him to try to detox him. He just got out last Friday and she brought him to RU. She said, I drove by this church, we live in Grove City, she drove, I drove by, I don't know how many times. She said, and I never noticed a sign until that day. I drove by and it was like, bing, and jumped out at me. Addiction program. She brought her son in. And, then, and, and this past Friday, she had to work late, and he came on his own and showed up. God's going to do something in his life. Opportunity. Don't miss the opportunity. The gift of physical life, the gift of eternal life, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Bible, the gift of opportunity. Let's use these gifts that God's given us. Let's, let's not abuse the gift. Let's not, let's not be like the guy who buries it. Let's use it for God's glory. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Lord, I pray that each of us would receive your gift and then use your gifts to influence our generation for Christ. To serve our generation by the will of God. Now, Father, I pray that you spoke in our hearts tonight. 
And I pray holy decisions will be made for you this evening. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I'm going to finish praying in just a moment. I wonder how many folks here tonight would say, Pastor, you know, you, you talked about physical life and then you talked about eternal life. And obviously you're here tonight, you have physical life. And I wonder how many tonight would say, Pastor, I've also received God's gift of eternal life. There's a time in my life when I realized that eternal life was being offered to me, not because of what I do, but because of what Jesus has done for me. And I accepted his gift of eternal life. And I know tonight that if I died, I'd go to heaven because I have eternal life because I've put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up for a moment that I may see it? Say, Pastor, that's me. All right, you may put it down. You're here tonight and say, Pastor, I don't know that for sure. I don't, I don't know that I've, I, I've ever understood exactly how to have eternal life. But if it's as easy as receiving a gift, Pastor, I sure would like to do that. Would you let me pray for you? We're not going to embarrass you, not going to call you out, but I'll simply remember you in prayer. You couldn't raise your hand the first time, but you'd slip it up right now and say, Pastor, pray for me this evening. Would you slip your hand up and put it back down? Say, Pastor, pray for me. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven, but I'd like you to pray for me. Could I do that for you? Would you lift your hand up and put it back down? wonder how many believers tonight would say, Preacher, I realize the gifts God's given to me. The gifts that are available to me. And Pastor, I, don't, I want to use those gifts. I don't, want to, I don't want to neglect the life He's given me. I don't want to neglect the Bible He's given me. I don't want to neglect the Holy Spirit that He's given to me. I don't want to neglect the opportunities He's given to me. I don't want to neglect the physical body He's given to me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I want to use my body as a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ. I don't know how the Lord dealt with your heart tonight, but if he dealt with your heart, you say, Pastor, pray for me this evening. God spoke to my heart. Would you slip your hand up, Christian, and say, pray for me this evening? Yes. Amen. Amen. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray, and we'll have our invitation. As soon as I'm done praying, the pianist will play. Brother Bob will sing. If God has spoken to your heart tonight, respond to him, will you please? And if you're here tonight while other Christians are coming to pray, if you're not sure about your salvation, would you come while they're coming? I'll meet you at the front. We have people here who have been trained. They'll take a Bible, and they'll show you how you can know Christ as your Savior. But don't, don't miss your opportunity. You may have other opportunities to receive Christ, but you'll never have a better opportunity than what you have right now. Why don't you see what the Bible says about that? Heavenly Father, bless this invitation. I pray, Lord, that your will will be done in each heart and life. Thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight. Lord, I pray that each one will do what you're telling them to do in their heart and holy decisions will be made for thee this evening that will impact our lives both now and for eternity and impact the lives of others to whom we'll serve. Have your way now, Lord. I thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Bible sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening. Will you please? I wonder, That's right. have I done my best for Jesus Who died upon the cruel tree To think of his great sacrifice at Calvary I know my Lord expects the best from me. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me? The hours that I have wasted are so many. The hours I've spent for Christ so few Because of all my lack of love for Jesus I wonder if his heart is breaking too How many are the lost that I have lifted How many are the chained I've helped to free 
I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me. I wonder have I cared enough for others or have I let them die alone. I might have helped a wonder to the Savior the seed of precious life I might have sown. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me. No longer will I stay within the valley. I'll climb to mountain heights above. The world is dying now for want of someone to tell them of the Savior's matchless love. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder have I done my best for Jesus when he has done so much for me. Go ahead and be seated for a minute if you would please. Appreciate your attention this evening and uh, we're glad to have Susan Woods coming this evening. Susan actually came this morning uh, during the invitation and uh, rededicated her life to Christ and uh, she'd been saved but she, not, she has not been baptized and so she wants to obey the Lord in baptism. That's part of dedicating your life to God, is uh, deciding to obey Him in baptism. And so we're happy to baptize Susan tonight upon her faith in Christ as her Savior, all right? Mrs. Wallace will take you down, Susan, and she'll get you ready to go. And uh, we praise the Lord for that decision, amen? amen. And uh, this is a result of uh, Quentin holding Bible studies uh, at his apartment complex. And uh, Susan started attending those Bible studies and now has come to church and she's uh, has been saved, but not baptized, and she's given her life to God now. So that's that's exciting, isn't it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Good, good job, Quentin. Uh, that's great. So we'll get ready to baptize, and Brother Bob, you take it from here. Sing a few of your favorites tonight, Julie. Number twenty. Always scared to pick on Julie's. There we go, though. 20, that works. I'm standing on the solid rock. Let's sing that first. Through my disappointment, strife, and discontentment, I cast my every care on the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain, or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. Not from Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. I like that song, Dan. 485, 485. I appreciate it when you have the number. That's just great. 485. This world is not my home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen. Xavier? 41. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Number 41. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains and sinners plunge 
216, 216, dwelling in Beulah land, far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling, 216, far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling, then I know the sin that would be more. Leanne? 246. 246. Higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Brother Linderman, 45. It's still the blood, 45. That's a good one. Once I wandered in sin, black night, there was a way I could make my wrongs right. Then that old accuser to the Lord did cry. Maybe a first on that song for me to do that as a congregational. That's a good song, though. Danny? 102. I like that. 102. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Let's sing that all together. Jesus loves me, this I know.
let's stand together, shall we? And not sure if Susan will make it to the back or not, but uh, make sure you congratulate her when you see her. We want to pray for uh, Bill's dad, uh, Tony. Uh, Tony's at OSU um, in the hospital, so let's pray for him. Some of you know he's the one who did a lot of the work down in the bathroom, uh, the ladies' restroom, so let's remember him in prayer tonight as we close in prayer, all right? Father in heaven, we bow before you now this evening. We, Lord, remember uh, Tony McKeon in prayer. God, I pray you'll work in his heart and life during this time. I pray, Lord, that this will be nothing serious. But, Lord, I pray that his thoughts will turn towards you. You'll use it in his life. Thank you, Lord, for his willingness to be a blessing to our church and to help us. And, Lord, I pray that he would know that we're praying for him this evening. We pray for you to do a, a great work in his heart and his life. Thank you for the McKeons and what they mean to us here at our church. And, Lord, we pray now that you'll dismiss us with your care and your blessing. Thank you for a wonderful Lord's Day together. Thank you for Susan and her decision to follow you. And, Lord, I pray that you'll encourage her this week and that we'll be and help her as a church family ought to help her and be an encouragement to her in every way. Lord, watch over us now as we go our separate ways and make us mindful of your presence with us throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together, shall we? Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go for it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.